Okay, so let's take a look at this question I have here and go ahead and pause the video and hit start um, when you're done and you're, I'm going to reveal what I have uh, gathered over the years with my students. So what, uh, what did you come up with? Take a look. Now, maybe you came up with more for this list. If you did, feel free to add in the comment section. Um, so, and this is something I had a student scribe write, so uh, I try to check for spelling, but there might be some errors here. My apologies for that. Uh, watch the next one and take a look at what I've starred. All right. Chromosome, chromatin, chromatid. All right. Zome, tin, tid. Think about it like that. Those are the ones that students really have to grasp what's going on. Now, all of these words are words they're going to use. That's why I said think about all the C words because there's a lot that you use with mitosis and uh, cytokinesis and even meiosis. Um, we're going to talk mainly about mitosis and cell division here. So let's start here. Chromatin, chromosome, chromatid. All right. When do you each use these terms? Let's take a look at this. All right. So this is your standard. Here's a eukaryotic cell. I know it's eukaryotic, not because it's got uh, all the stuff in the nuclear area, but because the nuclear membrane is surrounded by a membrane. Eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound organelles. A little bit of Greek here. And the only time this nuclear membrane is not going to be there is when it's necessary to get this material into a new cell. And that's what mitosis is going to do. It's going to divide the nuclear content, followed by dividing the cytoplasm. So that's called cytokinesis. That's the full name of a uh, full part of cell division. So the reality is, take a look, you got DNA, the double helix. Well, it starts to coil around little proteins, and we call those histones. Those proteins make up something called chromatin. The difference between chromatin, chromatin, and chromosome and chromatid is chromatin is a, the genetic material that's wrapped around into a package, but then it's further packaged into a chromosome when it's time to divide. Okay, so I have some poorly drawn art here. So I'm going to explain what this term monad and dyad means shortly, but let's look at this. So this counts as one chromosome. That's a chromosome. If you were to follow my mouse, uncoiling, unraveling it, uh, this, that's chromatin. And then over here, you'll see this happened to be, well, there's that other word, chromatids, but you say tids, as in sister. That means there's two of them. So let's elaborate on what all this is going on. A singled chromosome, which I'm calling a monad, is where you're going to see genetic material interacting during interphase. But there's a certain point during interphase where this is going to copy itself, but you don't see it coiled until you're ready to separate it. You coil it so you can properly separate it, and that's where this comes in, the doubled chromosome. And I'm calling a dyad. These are older terms, but uh, later on when I talk about tetrads, my students better understand it if I go back to monad and dyad. So once it's a doubled chromosome, it still counts as one chromosome in the doubled form, but at that point, it's split into what we call sister chromatids, and then there's the central mirror trying to show how it's attached. So let's move on. So I'm going to get rid of that chromatin labeling. Just call this a chromosome. I'll call this a chromosome. Take a look at this picture. Traditional picture, they show a chromosome before duplication, after duplication, separation of genetic material into two cells. Mitosis is cloning material. It's genetically identical. The parents are the same as the daughter cells. The parent is the same as the daughter cells. So let's do this. I this always confused me, so I like to add in a couple more hand-drawn chromosomes. So I'm going to count that. One, two, three, four chromosomes. Uh, now, what about this? You know what? Let's separate this so we can see it actually is a cell. So take a look at my lines. That's a cell membrane. Now, if this was accurate, I should draw a nuclear membrane around this and then show it start to disappear once you're in mitosis. If I wanted to label mitosis interphase, I would label this interphase over here. The duplication is the S phase of the cell cycle. And then over here, this would be mitosis. Um, well, if you can see chromosomes, it's prophase. And then separation, that would be anaphase. So I've skipped some phases like 
um, metaphase and, and telophase or telophase is after this. So how about the chromosomes? What do you see here? I'll pause and show you. One, two, three, four chromosomes. Okay. What do you see here? Correct. Four chromosomes. Now, for those of you who said eight, it's because you want you saw that it was duplicating. Well, this still counts as one chromosome. Monad, dyad. The chromosomes make copies so that one can go over to one daughter cell and the other piece can go over here. It's kind of also why I color coded it. So here's your genetic material. Half goes over here, half goes over here. So that counts as one, two, three, four chromosomes. This counts as one, two, three, four doubled chromosomes. I use the term monad, dyad. Okay, separation, one, two, three, four. We don't even call them chromatins now. At this point, we're going to call back to be calling them chromosomes. The chromatids become the feature chromosome. Let's move over and okay so at this point I'm gonna leave this up for about 30 seconds for each one. If you're at home copying notes I would pause at each stage or go back. Um, so let's start here. If we're gonna say cell division you gotta understand the whole purpose. In order to understand the, under the purpose you need to understand what exactly is a gene. It's a part of a, of a DNA, right? And a gene, DNA makes up genes, okay? A gene is a region of a chromosome or a chromatin that actually has a specific job that controls certain hereditary patterns. Now, we're going to learn later that it actually is going to code for RNA, which will in turn and make it possible for an amino acid sequence to make a protein. So let's see. In order to understand cell division, you got to understand that DNA has several cores. So if we can follow. Again, if I go too fast, I would go back and pause this. For those students who are absent, you need to copy the notes down. These are notes that were done in class. Okay, so during interphase, not mitosis, uh, it is in a form called chromatin, not chromosome. Now, what exactly is chromatin? It's about 50% protein, 50% DNA. Um, yeah, that's my other thesis from the student who wrote this up for me. So I'm going to move to the next slide. It's going to continue uh, to a slide after that. I put a little dot, dot, dot so you can see it's a continuation. So let's bring in, close by talking about this monad dyad thing, and we'll learn how they fit in place. OK, chromosomes. What are chromosomes? They're coiled up chromatin. They're coiled up chromatin. OK. Now, when a monad is a coiled up, is a coiled up chromosome with no exact copy. This really isn't 100% accurate. It's because the when it coils up, we're presuming it's made copies of itself so it can do mitosis. It can do nuclear division. That's what mitosis is. So it's more of a theoretical term. Um, now, I didn't make a mistake and just forget to do this. Look at dyad. It's a double banded chromosome. I used to say stranded, and I leave this here for a discussion piece in class. I don't want students to be confused by the language. So some books will call a doubled chromosome a double-stranded chromosome. Some will call it a double-banded. Um, I like to use both, but I crossed out stranded because later on we're going to learn about the structure of DNA, and I don't want you to think of confused double-stranded DNA versus doubled chromosome, double-stranded chromosome. The, DNA, the chromosome is made up of a double helix that coils around into a band that we call a chromosome. But here's, if you follow the progression, so we're going to see how do you get to dyad, and we have a lot of biochemistry learned to understand that, but a dyad, the chromosome, the double chromosome, it has an exact copy attached to a monad. So it's like two monads put together make up a dyad or a doubled chromosome. Here's my last little message. When we're trying to know the difference between interphase and mitosis, if you can see chromosomes, it's mitosis. It's one of the stages of mitosis. If you can't, you're looking at one of the stages of interphase, or what's called the cell cycle. They're all put in together. That's what another video will be talking about. Uh, so let's just kind of leave it with this. This monad, that counts as one chromosome. This dyad, that counts as one chromosome. And then if you, somewhere between, if I were to draw an arrow here, I would write DNA replication. So that pretty much closes this. Go back and watch some of the videos. Look at the notes and copy down. They were class notes that we did in class. And I'll attach this file to Blackboard.